Earlier, we published a video predicting how the NVIDIA DGX Spark might perform compared to the Jetson AGX Thor. At that point, Spark hadn't shipped yet. Only the specifications were available. I sharpened my pencil and on paper. That translated to about three times the compute throughput in the best case compute heavy workloads and around two times the CPU performance. With the Spark now shipping, we are able to compare results. We can look at the Geekbench scores for a CPU comparison. The Spark is a little over twice as fast on a single performance core. Remember that the Spark has a mixture of performance and power saving cores. All of the Thor CPU cores are of the same type. Even though Spark has 20 cores versus the 14 in the Thor, it only scores about 80% faster in multi-core tests. When the DGX Spark began shipping, Llama.cpp published a new round of benchmarks testing several large language models. I recreated those same tests by compiling Llama.cpp from source on the Jetson Thor and running the identical benchmarks. Both systems used the exact same release, the same models, and the same parameters, ensuring a true one-to-one -one comparison. Across every model tested, the performance differences followed the same pattern. In the pre-fill phase, Spark delivered about 1.9 times the throughput of Thor, almost exactly matching expectations. But during token generation, the advantage was different, and the gap became even more pronounced in multi-batch tests. It suggested there was more to the story than raw compute power alone. For example, let's take a look at GPT OSS 120B. The pre-fill for a single batch here is around twice as fast, but in the token generation phase, it's around 25 to 30 percent faster. Now, when we start serving multiple users, that's what multi-batch means. You can see that the pre-fill rate stays about the same. That's because it is compute bound. Both machines are at their maximum. On the other hand, in token generation, you can see that the Spark increases its lead on lighter loads. This lead eventually diminishes when both the Spark and Thor are saturated. On paper, the Spark should have outrun the Jetson Thor by a wide margin. It has roughly three times the CUDA cores, double the tensor cores, higher clock speeds, and a more capable CPU complex. And yet, the benchmark showed something more nuanced. The Thor holding its own once generation began? That raised a deeper question. What's really happening inside these systems once the model starts to think? From the outside, both appear to share the same memory, the same bandwidth, even the same software stack. But clearly something else is shaping how each system keeps pace. That's where the real story begins. To answer that, we need to look inside inference, how data flows, how compute weights, and where limits emerge. The first thing people need to understand about large language models is this. They don't understand words. They understand geometry. First, a simple truth. LLM inference isn't one workload, it's two. In the pre-fill phase, the model reads the entire prompt at once. Not just what you typed, but the hidden system prompt, past questions and earlier answers. All of that becomes one long stream of tokens the GPU processes together. During the pre-fill phase, the inference engine runs the model, turning each token in the prompt into numbers from its embedding table. Those numbers form the activations matrix, one row for each token. That matrix flows through the model's transformer layers. Each layer performs large matrix multiplications, forming projections of the activations, comparing them across the context, updating the results, and storing the keys and values for that layer in the KV cache. All of the math here is matrix multiply and accumulate. You'll see this referred to as gem, and sometimes a little bit of Greek. For prefill, 99% of the time is spent in gem. Tensor cores are specifically designed to optimize this function. Therefore, it's not surprising that since Spark has a little more than twice as many tensor cores, it's twice as fast in prefill. Across every model size, from 4 billion to 120 billion parameters, Spark delivers roughly twice the throughput of Thor. At first glance, you might think that comes from faster memory or a larger CPU, but both use the same memory architecture and bandwidth, and the CPU plays only a small supporting role. The real difference comes from compute capacity, Spark simply has more tensor cores running at higher speeds, pushing through more math every second. Generation looks back through the data gathered in prefill. The model's short-term memory of the conversation, known as the key value cache, retrieving small pieces of stored context to predict the next token. Each step triggers thousands of small memory reads for every bit of math. People often call this a memory bandwidth limit, but that's only partly true. The bottleneck isn't a full pipe, it's the time it takes to access and move many small fragments of data. 
the GPU waits while memory and compute coordinate the next set of activations to process. Once the context is built, inference takes over to generate each token in a sequential flow, one token at a time. Each new step draws on the short-term memory gathered during prefill, extending the model's understanding word by word. There's far less computation now, but much more coordination. Every new token depends entirely on the tight choreography between the CPU, the GPU, and memory. This is where the initial lead spark built in prefill starts to narrow. While Spark's larger GPU gave it a clear advantage in raw compute throughput, performance now depends less on raw processing power and more on system timing. How efficiently the CPU keeps the GPU engaged. In prefill, we're doing parallel processing. In token generation, it's mostly serial. Spark's faster CPU and coherent cache hierarchy hand off work with minimal delay, allowing tokens to flow in a steady rhythm. Thor runs the same code, but its smaller CPU and longer dispatch loop introduce tiny cumulative pauses between steps. Prefill rewards raw capacity, generation rewards coordination and efficiency. Spark holds a hardware advantage and uses it to coordinate each step more effectively. As models grow larger, the token generation rate declines for both the systems. But that change reveals two invisible boundaries every large language model eventually meets, the compute wall and the memory wall. During prefill, the model processes the entire prompt in parallel, pushing the GPU to its maximum compute capacity. That's the compute wall, the ceiling set by how many tensor operations the hardware can complete each second. Spark reaches that ceiling later, thanks to roughly twice the usable compute power. Once generation begins, the balance shifts. Each new token requires far less math, but much more data movement, reading and writing from the stored context built earlier. Here, the limit isn't computation, it's movement, the speed at which information can travel through memory. That's the memory wall. Spark and Thor share the same memory architecture and overall bandwidth. Yet Spark keeps more of its working data closer to the GPU and coordinates transfers more efficiently. Thor reaches its limits sooner, spending more time waiting for data to arrive. When we plot multi-batch throughput, the pattern is clear. As batch size rises, Spark keeps climbing. Its unused compute units light up and throughput scales. Thor flattens early. Is GPU already saturated at small batches? Both the systems share the same bandwidth ceiling but only Spark has enough headroom to keep approaching it. Even well below the hardware ceiling, both the systems face another limit, one that isn't about math or memory at all. Each token in a conversation triggers hundreds of tiny GPU operations, each one launched and synchronized before the next can begin. Those micro delays add up, forming what we call the overhead wall, the invisible gap between theoretical speed and what you actually see. It's the pause between steps, the brief moment when the GPU finishes one task and waits for the next data to be staged. In performance modeling, these limits define what engineers call a roofline, a way to visualize the ceiling set by system design. The compute wall marks how much math the hardware can do. The memory wall shows how fast data can move, and the overhead wall reveals how efficiently everything stays in sync beneath those roofs. Spark handles that coordination more smoothly. Its faster CPU, Deeper caches and coherent link to the GPU keep handoffs tight. Thor, with a smaller CPU and less shared cache, leaves longer gaps between steps. Beyond this point, the challenge isn't adding more power, it's mastering timing. Modern inference systems now focus on keeping the GPU continuously engaged, trimming idle gaps, and refining the flow between compute and memory. The closer those movements stay to the roofline, the nearer the system comes to its true potential. Mm -hmm.